Hello, I'm Bernie Hayes. Today's guest is the chairman of the St. Louis County Council, Rita Heard Days, today on The Bernie Hayes Show. Welcome back. I am Bernie Hayes, and my guest is, as I said, the president of the St. Louis County Council, Rita Heard Days. Ms. Data, Ms. Days, how are you? I'm fantastic, Bernie. Thank you, and thank you for having me on your show. Well, it's been a long time. It's been a couple of years since I actually saw you in person, but uh, but I've seen you in the newspaper and seen you on the on TV and so <laughs> forth. So welcome to the to, to, to our show. Well, thank you so much. You know, with COVID, uh, you know, people have been hunkered down, so it's not a lot of interaction, you know, physical interaction. So we just doing the best we can. Right. As your duties as the president of the St. Louis County Council, what are they? Well, I manage basically the uh, the six members in terms of legislation, making sure that, uh, you know, all the all the things that need to go right, go right. I, I actually chair the meetings. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so kind of keep peace and make sure that our meetings go smoothly. Uh, in the background, I, I basically uh, work very closely with our, our clerk there uh, on budget issues and personnel and things like that. So it's, uh, it's uh, more than I actually thought it was uh, initially, but uh, it's good work. It's good work, and I'm keeping very busy. You're sure no, 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 novice, no novice to public service. <laughs> Tell us a little about your background. Well, I actually started many years ago with the Normandy School Board and I had run that that was my very first you know political entree uh, into this kind of service and it just kind of grew from there uh, I had a mentor Neil Malloy who encouraged me to run for the House of Representatives and uh, of course I was a complete novice at that but uh, I had good help good support good mentors along the way and uh, they kind of shepherded me through that then, as you know, we have term limits in the, the state of Missouri, right. mm -hmm. and I was termed out of the House, uh, sat out a couple of years, and then ran for the Senate. Uh, at one point, Wayne Good and I were both representing the same district because of redistricting there, and he was termed out, but not yet, and then I came in, and so uh, I served in the Senate for eight years, termed out of that, and then I was working... Um, for uh, the election board for a while there. I, I was chair, I was actually director, the Democratic director of elections. And uh, I tell you, that is, um, you know, when you when you see the background and what happens in the back on all of these elections, you really have an appreciation for all the hard work that those folks do. And uh, that was an eye opener for me because we just walk up, we give our card and vote, and we think that's the end of that. But it, it's really a taxing job and uh, intricate because you want to make sure that everything goes right on that. So uh, after that, I went down to the Missouri Housing Development Commission. That was something else different that I had not done before. And uh, so I was the liaison there looking at the different neighborhoods, you know, trying to figure out uh, what neighborhoods really wanted affordable housing and the kinds of affordable housing that they did. So uh, it, it really, it, I was in there and I, that was where I was expected to retire. And um, then all of a sudden, Hazel Irby came along yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and she said, you know, I'm coming out and I, I really need somebody to go in there. I, I'm picking you is what she said. I'm picking you. So I ran for that special election, was successful, and here I am now. You know, you did some mighty wonderful legislation, some uh, legislation while you were in the Senate and also in the House. Tell us some of the things that you, bills you sponsored and, and well, supported. We, we yeah. worked on uh, quite a bit of legislation. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, interesting because we're going to be sponsoring a resolution for um, one of the facilities that's in my district in Ferguson, and it's midwifery. And before 2007, we did not have, it, uh, midwifery was illegal in the state of Missouri. And so I work with one of my colleagues from West County. As we know, in our culture, that's basically what we had many, many years. We were not able to go to the hospitals and things like that. I, I really, I really think that that was one of the, one of the best things I, I really did. And so we're going to be uh, honoring a facility that is located in Ferguson uh, on next Tuesday with a resolution. But I, it, it, it's so proud to see so, see your legislation move into actual reality. 
Uh, and so that was really one of the one of the signature pieces that I really, really am very, very proud of. That's great. How do you and Ella Jones work together, the mayor of Ferguson? We do very well yeah. together. Mm -hmm. I supported Ella uh, when she ran, and she's supporting me for my reelection. Uh, you know, Ferguson has had some challenges, and we really have to keep uh, a good eye on that because if we don't, we can revert to what was happening before, and that's not what we want to do. Uh, there's a lot of economic development going on over there, particularly on uh, West Florissant. Uh, we have a new Boys and Girls Club over there. We have a new uh, satellite hospital, uh, not hospital, but clinic over there. Uh, we're going to redo the street over there so it's more compatible for people who need to walk and ride bicycles. So we're doing quite a bit in Ferguson, and I'm extremely proud of Ella and the work she's doing. And uh, so we, we will be continuing on in that vein. I know Mike McMillan and the Urban League has also taken an interest in Ferguson. Yes, I neglected to mention uh, Mike because that actually that building was actually where an old Crip trip was, mm -hmm. and that was one of the buildings that was was burned down during the Ferguson uprising. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he's done quite a bit. Uh, even and I was talking about affordable housing earlier. Uh, they're going to be putting a, a new housing complex right there in the Dalewood area, which is right next to Ferguson. So uh, West Florida is on the move. When you were director of the county Democratic uh, Election Commission in St. Louis County, how difficult was that? Because there, there, you were in the news quite a bit because of uh, certain things. How difficult was that for you? It, it was difficult at times yeah. because even as the director, you still have to depend on the other 50 or 60 people that sure. are in the office yeah. to make sure that things are going well. And it's it's a lot of moving pieces. And so if one piece doesn't work, you know, it's kind of like a domino effect that it, it affects others as well. Uh, the technology has changed considerably. Uh, at one at the time I was there, we were working on the uh, the machines, if you will, and and uh, right now they are working on. Everybody has a paper ballot, so you make your own decisions. You know, there was controversy about the the machines changing your votes and things like that. I, I don't think that that ever happened, but you know, once people get those kinds of things in their minds, it's it's kind of it's kind of difficult to dispel. But uh, we had a couple of challenges there with people getting the wrong ballots. Again, you have we have a lot of volunteers. I call them volunteers because really the money that they get for poll working is really you know very very. Uh, uh, minimal, but mm -hmm. uh, and we had some people that received the wrong ballots at, at one time, and so having to go back and redo that. Uh, but it, it, it was a challenging position, I will say. But you were well praised because you you maneuvered through that quagmire, and uh, everybody said, "What a wonderful job you did!" And I, I wanted to say congratulations too because I know it was very difficult at that time. Well, thank you for that. I, I was <laughs> I always say that. And I, I hate to use the word always, but if you make a mistake, you know, my, my mantra is to accept the mistake. Uh, we, we goofed. Let's make it right and move forward. So uh, that, that's kind of been the way I've operated. Yeah, but they know that they weren't your mistakes. That was that those volunteers and other people. And right, the, and right. And the other party giving you all kind of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Actually, they did. But, you know, at the end of the day, the buck stops with me, and that's yeah. what happened. And so that's, right. uh, and that's the responsibilities you take when you are the director. Okay. Uh, we, the, we almost finished with this segment. We've got another segment coming up. I want to come get and talk about the, the mask mandates for St. Louis County and uh, why that is such a big deal. Uh, in, in the meantime, I also know that uh, usually when I see you at a public meeting, I see you just as many times out of church, at different churches. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, the last time I saw you at a church was at Lane Tabernacle. You were visiting us yes. at Lane, and I know yes. that you're a member of New Sunny Mount. Tell us about your church. Yes, I, I attend uh, New Sunny Mount Missionary Baptist Church, and Pastor Blake is, is our leader. Um, and, of course, uh, as all churches, we've been going through a really rough time now because we can't meet in person. And, you know, mm -hmm. there's something to be said about that interaction with people, particularly in a spiritual environment. And so, you know, you kind of miss the music and, you know, all of that as, as looking at it, um, um, you know, in person rather than uh, on YouTube or, or some other kind of, uh, you know, mechanical device. But we have a very nice church. We just paid off our mortgage 
<laughs> for our, really cool. our church there on uh, on West Florissant. So that was a huge deal. But uh, but we're moving forward and, and just trying to make sure that um, that we do what we need to do for the community. We we're mm -hmm. in a challenged community. We know that. And so mm -hmm. as much outreach as we can possibly do for that, I, uh, Reverend Blake is clearly on board with that. Congratulations for that mortgage uh, yes. retirement. Yes, yes. Uh, our guest is Rita Hurd Day. She's the chairman of the St. Louis County Council, and we're at the New Life Evangelistic Center, 2428, which enrolled in Overland, Missouri. I'm Bernie Hayes, and we'll be right back after this. Will you help New Life Evangelistic Center get back into 1411 Locust Street? Your tax-deductible gifts are urgently needed at this particular time, and there's many different ways that we're working to get back in that facility. One of the ways is to continue to inform the community through the Bernie Hayes Show and other programs. And if you haven't supported the Bernie Hayes Show and the work of New Life Evangelistic Center, please do it now. It's urgently needed. Your gifts are deeply appreciated. So many homeless people are waiting to get back into 1411 Locust, and so many others need the direct help that New Life is trying to provide at this time, but it's facing some real financial needs, and that's why your gift is very, very important. And to express our thankfulness for all of you that are sharing your gifts, we want to send you this special Bernie Hayes Cup. It's my wife's favorite drinking cup. She loves to drink out of this cup, and this is actually the only coffee cup she wants to use is the Bernie Hayes Cup. There's something very special about this cup, and we'll send it to each one of you that share a gift of $25 or more with the New Life Evangelistic Center and ask for your Bernie Hayes Cup. It's P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, that's 63166. Your gift will not only help us get back into the 1411 Locust Building, but will help our first responders that are on the streets, the first responders that we have out there day after day, night after night. It will help keep our uh, women and children in our safe houses, continue to keep our training programs open, our worldwide mission work, whether it's in India, Haiti, Africa, so many different things the New Life Evangelistic Center is doing. In addition to NLEC TV, tell your family and friends about it. Put it on your phone. Put on your, uh, get that phone app on all your friends' phones so they can all see the Bernie Hayes Show or go to 24.2. It's your prayers and gifts that make all of this possible. I thank God for those of you who continue to pray for the reopening of 1411 Locust and the work of New Life Evangelistic Center. There's so many obstacles we're facing as we try to help the homeless, but we're going to continue to give it to God. We're going to continue to pray. We're going to continue to work, but we need you to partner with us. So again, it's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, that's 63166. I thank God for each one of you that are praying, caring, and sharing. Welcome back. I'm so honored to have the chairman of the St. Louis County Council here with us, Ms. Rita Hurd Days. Uh, some people call you Rita, some people call you Retta. <laughs> well, my mother, who's dearly departed right now, she said they don't know what they're talking about. Your name is Rita. And Rita. I said, yes, ma'am. So I'm from the South. You don't argue with your mother, okay? So whatever she said, that's what goes. But people at, in my hometown, they know it's Rita, yeah. Uh -huh. Rid of her days. Yes. So uh, uh, tell us about this mask mandate. I see people are really up in arms, some of the businesses, some of the citizens, some of your constituents and so forth. Tell us what's happening with the mask, mask mandate in St. Louis County. Well, this pandemic has been something like we, we've never we've never uh, witnessed anything like this before, and it has been a challenge. It's been a challenge about the information that's coming out. It's been a challenge about implementation, what works, what doesn't work, and of course, at this particular point, we have social media, and and a lot of people are getting their diagnosis and information from social media rather than you know from their own personal physicians, mm -hmm. uh, and so that has been a challenge. However. Uh, in in, in uh, North County, most of our folks have worn their mask from the beginning. They did not, you know, once we had the relaxation of that, they did not take their mask off. And so we're moving toward now making sure that those who, uh, uh, it's really a mandate now. Uh, I just heard on the news this morning that the judge lifted uh, the temporary restraining order, uh, which was in place for uh, wearing your mask. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, that means that we're all required to wear our mask indoors. I wear my mask indoors, but I, I, I did that as a personal choice with or without, uh, you know, the court sanctioning. That's what I felt was uh, best for me. And so right now we're going to be required to do that. Um, it, it's a challenge, though. It, it really is because all the information is, you know, some is positive, some is negative. And we just have to take it in stride and do what we can do. I will tell you that I'm more interested in the vaccinations and making sure that all of the people get vaccinated, particularly in North County. 
we have a very, very low rate of vaccinations, but we have a high rate of the, of the, uh, of the disease itself. The pandemic has just reached havoc on our community. And that's basically because we have a lot of comorbidity issues that have not been addressed uh, with that. We have the obesity, we have the hypertension, you know, we have the diabetes, and of course we have the environmental issues that are, are affecting uh, our people disproportionately than in others, and that's particularly <clears throat> in the North County area. So we're, we're dealing with it. We're going to be dealing with it. We just hope that we can get the vaccination rate up enough uh, so that we we can turn the curve on this pandemic. Mm -hmm. I did notice that the numbers are, are way down. The last I checked, the numbers of, of infections and hospitalizations way down. So I think we're heading in the right direction on that. For those people who are unvaccinated at this time, what would you say to them? Listen, the vaccination saves lives. This is not, you, you've got your uh, flu vaccine, you've got your smallpox, we've got all these other vaccines that we have not had problems with. And I think that uh, if you have questions, you need to talk to your physician. That's what I did uh, uh, initially. I will say that I had some hesitancy about this. And I went to my primary care physician and she explained to me what it was. She answered all of my questions and I felt a little more, more comfortable in getting the vaccine at that particular point. But vaccinations save lives. They keep the people out of the hospital. And even if you have a breakthrough, it's not as bad as having the, you know, the actual COVID itself. Sure. So I, I really, I'm going to be sponsoring, I haven't all the details yet, but I'm going to be sponsoring some vaccination events in the mid-county, mid-North County area, uh, probably starting at the end of this month. So we're really hoping to get our numbers up considerably. Mm. As chairman of the St. Louis County Council, do you still represent a district? Could, could tell, what, what district do you represent? I represent the first district, and mm -hmm. that's uh, uh, mid-North County, I want to say, closer to the uh, city limits. I represent 40 municipalities, 40 mayors, 40 city councils, and uh, but it starts at the city limits, and uh, and I do have some of Overland. That's my, uh, I think my western point. So mm -hmm. I have a little of Florissant and a little of Hazelwood, and uh, and then I go to Delmar on the south. So uh, it's a, it's a nice diverse district, uh, and it's has been uh, represented so well for 15 years uh, by Hazel Irby. And so stepping into her shoes and you know having to carry on some of the things that that she did, and making sure they come to fruition, uh, that's been a uh, that. It's been a huge deal for me. So I'm very happy to do it, though. Mm. What is Rita her day's uh, mission for that particular district? I'm sorry, my what? What's your mission? What's your vision for the district? I'm really interested in, in health care, uh, but our district has so many challenges, economic development. We need to make sure that we have the kinds of, of, of businesses to come into our community. We have a lot of small businesses, which or I guess the backbone of our economies, is small businesses are what makes that go around. And of course, the health outcomes, as I mentioned, the health outcomes in our district are, are not very good at all. And so those are two of the things that I'm really, really uh, trying to make sure that we get a better bang for our buck in this. Um, and we look at housing. We have uh, a lot of problem properties uh, in our in our district, and having to utilize some money to remedy those. Some of them have been abandoned. When we had the housing crisis, uh, many ho homes were abandoned. The people, you know, had had these balloon notes, and they could not, you know, manage that. So we have a lot of lot of issues. But I'm trying to do my very best to handle most of them. Mm -hmm. You were termed out for state senate, and you were termed out for House of Representatives. But do you offer re-election uh, for the city council? Uh, how yes. can one reach you and, and help you? If, and I'm sure you need help. <laughs> and we, I, I do need help. I have. I'm going to leave actually my home phone number, which is area code three one four three eight five nine five nine eight. That's a little too fast. Here, just say just a little bit slower <laughs> for us, please. Three one four three eight five. Nine five nine eight, and that's my home phone number. If you're interested in helping me with this campaign, the election is August 2020, 2022. Mm -hmm. and uh, and so I'm I'm off to the races. I'm getting ready to have my kickoff on November 11th at 5:30 p.m. at the Glen Echo Country Club, and so that's going to be the kickoff for this uh, this election coming up in August of 22. How much support do you need? 
Well, I need a lot of support. I, mm -hmm. Actually, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a, a big, huge district. As I said, it's diverse. But I treat every election as if it were, you know, life and death, depending on that, if you will. Uh, I don't take anything for granted. I don't assume people, first of all, know who I am and know the kinds of work that I have done. So I, I utilize that opportunity to make sure that I reintroduce myself to a lot of people. This is a, a transient district a lot of times. And so I want to make sure that the people know who I am and what I'm doing and how hard I am working on their behalf. Okay. And we want to separate your campaign from the city council. How, how can one reach you at St. Louis County Council? The council is 314-615-5436. And if you call that number, we're in and out because of the COVID situation. Sure. But we do answer the phones. They go to uh, my assistant's computer, and uh, we do respond to those phone calls. Uh, but it is very important that you reach out. A lot of people will say, well, we don't know how to get in touch with you. And my information is there. I've never been shy about sharing the information about how to get in touch with me. Do you have a website or email address? Uh, I, I have an email address. It's rdays at stlouiscountymo.gov. Okay. St. Louis County, spell that out, St. Louis County Mo. Dot gov. That's right. That's one. That's the way we're going to reach rid of her days. And uh, we're the New Life Evangelistic Center, and Reverend Larry Rice has been here for nearly 50 years, providing services for those in need. And uh, we'll be right back with rid of her days after this. New Life Evangelistic Center is celebrating 50 years of God's faithfulness. For many of those years, Bernie Hayes has been a direct part of the work of New Life Evangelistic Center. I thank God for Bernie, his faithfulness, and how he is such a legend when it comes to broadcasting throughout the greater St. Louis area. Will you join Bernie and myself as we celebrate the 50 years of God's faithfulness? I want to involve you in the planning committee, for we've got a lot of great things in store in 2022. Why don't you call us at 314-421-302 and be a part of that committee, or go to www.newlifeevangelisticcenter.org. Will you celebrate the 50 years of God's faithfulness along with Bernie Hayes and myself and so many others throughout Mid-America? I know that the Lord has ministered to many of you through the work of New Life Evangelistic Center. We'd like to have you share your memories with us. So will you call us at 314-421-3020 or contact us at come by 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. Yes, we're celebrating God is faithful. <music> Today's black history subject is actor James Earl Jones. He was born in Acabula, Mississippi on January 17, 1931. He went on to star in a long list of successful movies and plays, becoming widely known as the voice of Darth Vader in the Star Wars films franchise. James Earl Jones made his Broadway debut in the 1950s in the play Sunrise at Campobello, and for several years he took on a variety of roles for stage, television, and film. Jones appeared in numerous Broadway productions during the 1970s and 1980s. He had starring roles in such productions as the 1974 revival of John Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men and the 1978 two-man show Paul Robeson. Jones won Tony Awards for his performances in The Great White Hope and Fences and garnered an honorary Academy Award in 2011. He also is a two-time Emmy Award winner. James Earl Jones. Now you can take NLEC TV anywhere as you put the NLEC TV app on your iPhone or mobile device. NLEC TV is an innovative TV station that's on the cutting edge of community service. On NLEC TV, you'll discover wholesome family, community, renewable energy, and inspirational programming. Those needing energy assistance, food, clothing, or freedom from the cycle of homelessness will find that plus much more on NLEC TV. Now, you can receive NLEC TV by going to 24.2 on your television set or putting the NLEC TV app on your iPhone or mobile device. For further information, call 314-436-2424 or go to NLECSTL.org. That's NLECSTL.org. And welcome back. I'm Bernie Hayes. Our guest is the chairman of the St. Louis County Council, Ms. Reda Er Days. Uh, Ms. Days, um, it's very important that uh, in some folks' eyes and in hearts that you become, you stay in that council seat because uh, 
there's been some challenges, I understand, uh, from outside entities. How can one reach you and help you and support you? My home number is 314-385-9598. In this business, as you well know, you don't please everyone, and, uh, and so you try to do the very best that you can. Public service is a calling in my mind, uh, and if clearly you don't do this because you want to make money, that's not it at all, because the, the, the pay is very minimal, but it's about public service, and if you're truly, truly a public servant, that, that really does not matter. Many of uh, my council members have additional jobs that they go to. I do not at this particular time, uh, so this is, this is what I have, but I am semi-retired, so you know, the money is not an issue, but actually, making sure that people have what they need, making sure that the district is well represented, the district gets what it's need, it needs from wherever uh, is, is, is my first and foremost um, uh, job, I feel. And so uh, working with my colleagues, we're able to do quite a bit, but we have some budgetary challenges. We have other challenges that we must meet in St. Louis County, and I'm there for the long haul as long as the people want me to continue to do what I want to do. The people of the first district, first and foremost in my mind. Okay. Um, as an African-American woman, and as a woman, in, I mean, just your gender, what challenges have you faced? Many challenges, uh, <clears throat> Bernie. It's, it's sad to say that um, even uh, serving in the House and the Senate, uh, I was a, a minority on both ends. I was uh, very few women are there and very few blacks are there. And so when it comes to issues that affect us, you have to kind of be everywhere and making sure that the voice of the African-American people uh, is heard. And so there have been some challenges and some negativity uh, revolving around my sex as well as my race. But I take the high ground. I, I do my homework. I know what I'm talking about when I hit the, hit that floor uh, in the House and the Senate. And, and basically the same thing is for the county council. Uh, we, I'm one of two. The other African American is a woman, and she is uh, Councilwoman Shalonda Webb from the fourth. And so we have really formed this very, very close bond. We're working together to because North County is North County, and people don't divide that according to the first and the fourth districts. So we're about the business of making sure that North County is made whole. And so we work very well together. And as a matter of fact, I have a meeting with her uh, this morning later on. And and uh, we're mapping out what we need to do to better uh, North St. Louis County. And tell us a little bit more about your faith. I am a, I was actually born uh, a CME. My grandfather was a CME minister. And, uh, but coming to St. Louis, I found um, at least the family went with, uh, with the Baptist um, uh, religion, Protestant still, and uh, but my uh, husband at the time was a Baptist, and so we went uh, with his faith and uh, stayed there. It's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. But I find that all of of the religions are basically the same. We basically believe in the same, and um, it's just a different kind of, uh, I guess, um, philosophy that you will deal with in terms of the of the Protestant versus the other other religions. But uh, I. I'm uh, faithful to that church. I have not been able to go because of COVID, but I send in my money. I just want to say thank you so much. And I know that uh, you've always been an advocate for the homeless. Uh, you've helped uh, Reverend Rice for so many different days in so many ways. And uh, you've also provided so much support for the homelessness in St. Louis County. And I just want to say thank you, Brother Bird okay. Days, for being with me and uh, Good luck to you and your challenges that you face. I'm quite sure you'll overcome them, and you'll probably more than likely be reelected. Through, through prayer, I am doing that prayer and support. And I uh, and uh, Reverend, the New Life Evangelistic Center is one of the uh, one of the organizations that I support financially and and have been doing so. And so it's 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 my honor actually to do that to help those who uh, cannot at this particular point help themselves. And we thank you so very much. Have a great day. Thank Please you. Please stay safe. Thank you. And uh, you as I want well. each and every one of you to also support, keep supporting the new life. Evangelics and I'm Bernie Hayes, and have a great day. Get vaccinated. Stay safe. Wear your mask. <laughs>